check out my fractal tree. This is what you get when you beat the game. Oh, so many options. Watch this beautifulness. try <clears throat> something here. I'm going to try and make a video of me uh, playing a video game that's going to teach us about uh, genetics. So, you're going to need something that accesses the internet. And you need to do a little search for Nova Lab Evolution. Don't go to the answers. Nova Lab answers. Lame people. All right, so this is it. It's through PBS.org. The same thing that has the free kids shows on TV. All right, so let's go to Nova Labs. And it is going to have you log in. Yes, this is my, my station. This is my channel. So when I go to click play game, um, we're going to see how mushrooms and dinosaurs and bacteria are all related and such. Um, it's going to have you log in. You don't have to log in. You can play Guest Pass and then you don't have to log in at all. If you do that, progress will not be saved. And that's a problem. Uh, because this is going to take you like a week to complete all this. So really you do want to save it. Unless you're going to just spend like eight hours playing this game, you're going to want to sign in. So let's click sign in with Google. Now <clears throat> I need to sign in using my personal account because my school account has, um, I've already beat the game. So I'm playing with my personal account right now. Okay, so we've got a video intro we can watch real quick. This will help kind of teach you how to play the game and everything. But uh, let's pretend like you're a lazy student. Hint, hint, haha. -ha. And uh, you didn't click on that. Let's see if you can figure out how to do this. All right, so we've got the deep tree. We'll talk more about the deep tree later. And we've got this beautiful thing right here. This beautiful thing is your tree. And this, as beautiful as it is, is not good enough. You need to be able to adjust it. But you can't yet because you haven't played enough of the game. So, we need to grow your fractal tree. And to do that, we've got to play this game. These videos have the answers to some of the questions in them. So, it is important to watch these videos. Okay, go to the window, or better yet, step outside. A squirrel darts past. Trees and weeds surge up toward the sky. Birds tickle the air. Get down on the ground, and there's more. Worms wriggling, mushrooms sprouting, beetles crawling. There's stuff you can't even see, like bacteria. And everywhere you go on this and planet, on land, underground, in the air, and in the water, there's more life to be found. And all of it, even you, is shaped by the most incredible of forces. Evolution. Evolution. Essentially multiplies majesty by majesty by majesty. And our understanding of all that I majesty, no idea what he just it goes said. back to the mid-1800s oh, when that's... an English 20-something, a guy named Charles Darwin, got an invitation he couldn't refuse. To travel around the world was five years, and that voyage made him into a thinker. He was just a great naturalist. He saw things out in nature, and he asked why. As in, why is there such a stunning diversity of life? Why are similar-looking species sometimes located on opposite sides of the planet? It was Darwin and Alfred Russell Wallace who independently puzzled out a mechanism behind evolution. Which was natural selection. Natural selection just means that nature, the natural environment, is what's selecting which organisms survive long enough to reproduce. And it depends on two key ingredients. 
The first is some way of getting features or traits to be inherited from one generation to the next, which usually means reproduction. Wow, the second is variation. If organisms were to make exact duplicates of themselves like every time they reproduced, nothing would change. There'd be no elephants, no pine trees, no humans. We'd still just be single-celled proto-organisms. Now, the environment can support every individual that's born. Maybe it's too dry or too wet for some of them. Maybe all the food's up in tall trees. Maybe there's not enough food. Or maybe it's just really cold. Whatever it is, organisms compete for resources. And this is Poor where selection fish. comes in. For instance, scientists believe that a few hundred thousand years ago, before there were polar bears, some brown bears got stranded in the... <clears throat> All right, I'm going to let you finish that video. Oops. So, you watch that whole video, then you click play. Oh, our tree shrunk down into a very simple tree, darn it. Let's talk tree basics. Okay. An evolutionary phylogenetic tree is a depiction of how different species are related to each other. We'll start with just one branch, which represents a single species, like cushioned sea stars or human beings. The top of that branch contains all the individual organisms of that species, so all people or all cushioned sea stars. If we travel along a branch back in time, you come to common ancestors of species when two branches come together. Now, let's roll time forward like instead. This split point represents the evolutionary moment when a common ancestor species diverged into two distinct species, a process called speciation. As time goes on, you get more splitting, more species, and more biodiversity, until you get a tree that looks something like this. It's a hierarchical arrangement of how those organisms originated and who they are more closely related to. A tree nice. isn't a literal timeline, but it does show the passing of time. More ancient branches occur deeper in the tree, and more recent splits occur closer to the well, tips. For the each puzzle in this lab, you'll be organizing a collection of species into a tree. Start by using the magnifying glass to learn about the oh, organisms. Yeah, the Explore glass. the species screens and the comparison screen there's, to track down the characteristics or answers. traits that different groups of species have in common. Now, not all traits are useful for analyzing evolutionary relationships, but not to worry, we've made sure to give you mostly informative oh, cheat, ones. Cheat. Nice. After you've gathered the information you need, build your tree by dragging species icons and then traits into the... Okay, so, I'll start with red and green geckos. Oh, no, red, green, and gecko. Your first question is simple. Is a fungus more closely related to a plant or an animal? This is one of my favorite ones. So, funguses, like a mushroom. Is it closer related to a palm tree or a gecko? Alright, so now let's figure out how to play this game. We've got this little blue dot here that's called cells with nuclei. So, having a nucleus in your cell. And then we have these two things here. Drag these two species into the center. Okay, so grab a gecko, drag it, and drop it up here. Simple enough. Now a tree. We drag the tree, we drop it up here too, and now we have ourselves our first phylogenetic tree, where these two things may or may not be related. Uh, spoiler alert, they are related way back in the day. Okay, so now drag the shared trait onto the tree. And I don't know if they mean palm tree or not. So which one of these things has cells with a nucleus in it? Is it this one? Is it this one? Or is it both of them? Well, I'm going to get it wrong on purpose. So, I am correct. The gecko does have it, but both species share this trait. So i got to place it somewhere where this trait can get passed down through the bloodlines to both of these creatures. So both of these things have cells with nucleuses. All right, so next. Okay, now we've got more dots over here. We've got heterotrophic, whatever the heck that means. I will tell you that hetero means different. Trophic has something to do with eating. 
and photosynthetic autotroph. Auto means doing it on your own. Troph has something to do with eating. Photosynthesis. Hmm. Oh, and look, we got a mushroom here. Okay, so we need to learn more. We can click on the magnifying glasses, and this will give us some information. It has cells with nuclei, and it is heterotrophic. That means that it eats nutrients. It actually eats other creatures. Weird. Who would have thought that a mushroom eats other creatures? All right, so is that going to be photosynthetic, where it's using photosynthesis? Or is this going to be uh, something that eats other creatures? Like a gecko eats insects. So right now, down our bloodline, we've got cells with nuclei. And it turns out that all of them have cells with nuclei. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you get something wrong here. So heterotroph means you're going to eat something. Plants don't really eat anything besides sunlight. But if I pretend like it's eating other creatures... Ah, uh, you see how the green thing got kicked out? So, I was wrong. Alright, so let's give it to the gecko. Geckos eat insects. That makes it a heterotroph. Yay, I'm done with the gecko. But, my... I'm not done. I'm missing a dot here, and I'm missing a dot here. So, I know this thing's a heterotroph. Uh, just because I know that heterotroph means to eat stuff. And if you click on it, it tells you heterotrophic. So what about this thing? Well, we already read on it once, but we're going to read on it again. It is also heterotrophic, so I need to move this green dot to a point where both of them are sharing this trait. Which means that photosynthesis is going to be taking place in a tree. And if you don't believe me, you can cheat and go to the little cheat sheet here. Alright, I got it done. So it turns out that all of these have the blue trait. We all have the nucleuses in us. But, mushrooms are closer related to us because they actually eat things, not sunlight, unlike trees. Now that you've completed the first puzzle, answer this question. Is an animal or a plant more closely related to a fungus? Well, which one of these is closer related to this? So, these things are related here. If you go back in time, yes, it's also related to this, but it's closer related to this thing, which is an animal. Boom. And it's important to get these things right because you get points up here, and if you miss points, your tree, your little uh, fractal tree, is going to suck compared to the rest of ours. All right. So you want to get points. Now that I have some points... I played this, I can move on to playing this, there's three parts to this, I will have this mission done. When you get done with the mission, you will notice that your tree gets cooler. Right now, it goes back to being real simple. So, we gotta even be able to finish the first three games just to be able to do Let's this. Let's talk Alright, moving on to the next one. So I'm going to show you a fast version. So let's start by just throwing things up here. we got dogs, we've got fish, we've got king snakes, we've got stick insects. Now we got to figure out how these things are related. Is the fish closer to the dog and the snake is closer to the stick insect? Like, these things are all related back here, but which, like, where, which one branched off uh, before the rest of them? So... Um, the way you're going to figure this out is by clicking on them and looking at the little cheat sheet things. So, click on the thing, on the critter, click on its magnifying glass. It's a vertebrate, and it has bilateral symmetry. It's a fancy word for it looks the same on both sides. Um, I will tell you that if you cut a... Let's start with a fish. If you cut a fish in half lengthwise, it's like symmetrical on both sides but so is a dog so is a snake and so is the stick insect if you click on these things they're all going to have bilateral symmetry this thing has no other traits that's it it has the one trait so we know this thing branched off long ago stick insect branched off it's a, it's a pun 
So we're going to bring this trait down here because I bet they all have bilateral symmetry. Yay, we got all yellow dots. And that's really the check to let you know if you got it right or not. So now we need to see how these three things are related. We're done with the stick insect. It's got its one trait. We need to figure out about this amniote and vertebrate thing. Well, a vertebrate means that there's a backbone. So I'm pretty sure a fish has a backbone. Yes, it does. I'm pretty sure a dog has a backbone. It's a vertebrate. Oh, it's also something called an amniote. And then this king snake. Hey, I don't want a king snake. Uh, it's also an amniote, and it's a vertebrate. It's got a backbone. All right. So now that we know that, I wish I would explain to you what an amniote is, but that's okay. These two things are related more than this fish is. So we need to get this dog related to the king snake, not to the fish. So all you gotta do is pull it off, bring it over here by the king snake, drop it. And so now, all three of these are going to have a backbone. But these two, unlike the fish, are amniotes. And now we should be done. Everybody gets a yellow dot. These two get a red dot. That one does not get a red dot. The animals in this puzzle look very different, but they all have one thing in common, and that is that they are symmetrical. You did it. Good job. We now have four points out of our six points, and then we will be done with this first chunk of this. Oh, it's getting more complicated now. We've got a banana. We've got a lemon. We've got an onion. We've got a radish. Yes, all these things are alive. And we've got seaweed. Now, how are they all related? Well, we got a lot of traits going on here. So... Photosynthesis. You'd think that they all use photosynthesis. Let's find out. If we click on the little things, it is photosynthetic. It also has, ooh, wow, that's crazy looking. Have you ever seen a banana tree before? It's got flowers with petals in multiples of three. So you'll see three petals coming off their little flowers, okay? Then with a lemon, is it, uh, is it uh, photosynthetic? Of course it is, but its flowers are four and five. Onions. Onions are photosynthetic. They use photosynthesis. They have three petals. Hey, wait a minute. That banana had three petals. I'm going to put this onion closer to the banana. All right. Radishes. They have four or five petals, and they also use photosynthesis. So we're going to move them closer to the lemon, because that said four and five uh, petals. And now the seaweed, is it photosynthetic? It's green, man. The reason that it's green is because it's trying to eat sunlight. So yes, they're all photosynthetic. This one's weird, though. It releases spores into the water to reproduce. So this thing's going to be a bit different from the rest of these, these guys. So this whole releases spores into the water, that's a pretty specific trait. It's only going to that thing. All right, so they're all photosynthetic, so let's give them all that trait. If, it, if any of the little pink dots jump out, we know we got it wrong. Oh, good, they all got pink dots. All right, now which ones had petals of three? I believe it was the banana and the onion. Which one had petals of four and five? I believe it was the lemon and the radish. Now, we're not quite done. We'll let that go through real quick. Seaweed is done, but we're missing a trait here, a trait here, a trait here, and a trait here. All four of these things are different from seaweed because unlike seaweed that uses spores, these things use flowers to reproduce. You know, get those pollinators to come hang out inside their flower, like a bee. All right, so at this point, we should now have all of our dots. Yeah. Is a banana more closely related to a lemon or an onion? Is a banana closer to a lemon or an onion? Well, the answer is pretty obvious to me. Excellent. Nice. 
fruits and vegetables. Come on, vegetables don't exist in science. Let's check out our score. We got the quiz right on each of these. We got a six out of six. Well done. Mission one is completed. You have five left. And look, you finally get a little bit of your tree. You can now adjust a couple things about the tree. You can change that part of it. You can change this part of it. You can change this part of your tree. So you got a few little little parts you don't get to change its color. This is a special secret thing you'll find out later. So anyway, that's your little um, unlockables, what you uh, win and you access it through this. So the more things you get, the, the better you do, the more you unlock this tree until you can make something pretty, pretty amazing. All right, so you'll, you'll move on to mission two, so on and so forth. Good luck. Let me know if you guys uh, get stuck.